foul smell fills the air as my dissolving limbs grow black. Protect the captain! Get him somewhere safe! No, leave me. Run. As long as you're alive, we can rebuild. We promised, didn't we? Our lives are in your hands. You're not allowed to make the sacrifice for me. Please, save yourselves. I'll never forget the memory of that day. My conceit put us in that mess, but I was the only one who made it. After all the good times we shared, after all the pain, they would have to live on in my memory. Once I could pick myself back up again, I began to temper my body. I swore I'd never let the same tragedy repeat itself. It wasn't long before this husk became resilient, augmented and conditioned to withstand even lightning. I no longer felt physical pain, or much of anything at all. It was preferable that way. I could be a shield to protect others, to protect them from the same tragedy that befell my crew. Having lost my place in the world, I found a home in the society and quickly became contractor to the seal weapon, Great Scythe Grinoth. My missions were simple, hunt primal beasts or exterminate the foe. I did my job so that I could keep people safe to aid them in their time of need. But despite my best efforts, I still failed. I was powerless when Vern was kidnapped right in front of me. Worst of all, I could do nothing but watch as our hopeful new recruit was cut down. What good was I when I couldn't even protect a single one of my comrades? <sighs> Maybe the real mistake was believing I could do good in the first place. I joined the society to protect others, which sounds noble on paper, but in reality, it was all for my own sake. I'm the reason that my old crew, my family, found an early grave. It was only right that I spend the rest of my meager life in atonement. At least, that's the excuse I told myself. In truth, another part of me was deluded into thinking I could free myself from the guilt, but only if I could change into another person. Turns out that being immune to physical torture does nothing to protect your heart from psychological torment. Speaking of mental suffering, not long after I joined the society, Ilsa assigned Zeta as my partner. The old me would have worked with her just fine, but... Too much had changed. Her blunt honesty rubbed me the wrong way. A man can only take so much random commentary before he goes insane. Even Ilsa called her pupper, which was kinder than what I had in mind back in those days. But it was an apt name, considering all of her barking. I didn't care about forging a real partnership with Zeta. Every time we had a mission together, I just wanted to finish it as fast as possible. But it backfired. Whenever I pushed her away, she pushed back ten times harder. She was determined to know me. I would have never admitted it out loud, but I was afraid. After all, the closer you are with someone, the harder it is to cope with their loss.
As for why I joined the captain's crew, well, I had my reasons. The captain's father was awaiting our crew in Estelucia, and that meant duking it out with primals and gathering sky map pieces along the way. The captain was strong and humble, had a knack for overcoming hardship. With leadership like that, I knew this crew could actually make it. That's not to say they were running a flawless operation. The way I saw it, they had two big problems. Vern and Lyria, the Red Dragon and the Girl in Blue. It's true they were core members of the crew, but they possessed powers which could represent grave consequences for the skies. Should one overflow with astral energy, or the other absorb enough primal power, they would be erased and herald the destruction of everything as we know it. It was possible the captain could reach Estelucia without any sacrifices, but I wasn't the type to bet on fate. These kids needed a shield. This body of mine would protect them all, no matter what came to pass. At least, that's what I intended. During the fight against the Moon Dwellers, I lost myself to the Atomagod Grinoth's power and raised my scythe against the crew. As pathetic as it was, I became the very threat I swore to protect them from. That was why I prepared a way to stop my own heart. I wouldn't hurt my comrades again. If I couldn't protect anyone, then the least I could do was make sure I could do no more harm. What are you playing at, Vasaraga? Is this your penance after what happened to Lester? I was fine with sacrificing myself, as long as I could save someone else. A part of me even believed I deserved such a fate. I... I hate when you act alone. You could have come to me for help first, you know? We're partners, damn it! I couldn't feel pain, but... Somewhere inside, I felt like a wound had split me in two. It took me far too long to realize that it hurt my comrades to see me suffering. That I had chosen to run instead of face my fears. Did you hear me, you big lug? You're not gonna drop dead on us. Not on my watch. My partner's instincts were sharp enough to cut right through me. But it was her words, honest and blunt, which shattered the walls around my cowardly heart. The pain I should have dealt with a long time ago came spilling out, but this time, it was accompanied by a burning desire. We're going to survive this, together. And that's the way it's been ever since. Our adventure began with a strange light falling over my home island of Zinkenstill. I chased it to the impact site, where I found a blue-haired girl named Lyria and a knight, Catalina. The girl was shaken, and pretty soon I learned the reason why. She was on the run from Erste Empire soldiers. I knew an unfair fight when I saw one, so I stepped up to protect Lyria from those awful tyrants. Catalina and I fended them off well enough, but when their backs were in the corner, they released a fire-breathing Hydra. It charged me, sending me flying into the tree line. Moments away from death, all I could think about was Dad. He'd been the one who trained me, and he'd done a great job, but... Well, who expects their son to get attacked by a five-headed horror? was going to be devastated. So, it's all over. Just as I began to sink into darkness, a gentle light enveloped my body. Lyria, breathed by a mystical halo, 
was floating above me with her hand outstretched. She explained that she was going to merge our life forces. Fortunately, it worked. From that moment forward, Lyria and I would be inextricably linked. Looking into her blue eyes, I knew I had nothing to fear, not even death itself. Two people, one life, a greater whole. Lyria had taken a huge risk to save me. Now, if one of us got hit with a fatal blow, it was curtains for both. And that thought awakened in me a desperate hunger for survival, for life. The next moment, Lyria and I felt this reverberation of power. The torrent of emotion rushing from me had awakened something. Darkness and flame swirled around us, coalescing into a massive dragon, Bahamut. With him on our side, we made short work of the Imperial Hydra. Now that their trump card had been blasted into oblivion, the Imperial Army had no choice but to run. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I hadn't chased that light. No Lyria, no lifelink, no adventure. And I probably wouldn't even have set foot off of Zinkin still. Fate's a funny thing, isn't it? Since meeting Lyria, we've seen our fair share of joy and happiness, and pain and suffering. But the Grand Cypher crew doesn't buckle under pressure. We'll take on anything the journey throws at us. No regrets. Now, where was I? Oh, right. We've just humiliated the Empire, who probably had reserves waiting somewhere close by. We realized we needed to get off Zinkenstill. Fast. The Empire was not going to rest while Lyria was on the loose. And I figured that since we shared a life force now and all, it was in everyone's best interests if we stayed together. Plus, I'd always wanted to explore the far reaches of the skies, though, Doing it on the run, not what I had in mind. There was so much to think about, so much to decide. But all those plans could come after we had escaped Zinkenstill. I didn't want a whole army, this time with, I don't know, 30 Hydras marching on my home island. And, well, I had another, more personal reason for wanting to leave. Before I knew it, our journey was at an end. The end. As in, we'd reached the end of the skies. My son, I'm waiting for you on Estalusia. I thought about Dad's letter. I missed him. When I was young, he would take me to the edge of the island, and we'd sit there, admiring the clouds. I wanted so badly to explore those skies, just like Dad. I had to see him again. And now, I wouldn't have to make that journey alone. With Vern, Lyria, and Catalina at my side, we commandeered a small Imperial craft and set out for the greatest of destinations, Estalusia. From the moment we left Zinkenstill, our adventures were hectic, to say the least. Catalina, who claimed to be an experienced pilot, crashed our small vessel onto the gusty fields of Port Breeze. But we quickly pulled ourselves together and found a new ally, and helmsman, in the form of Rackham. Since then, we gained more and more allies, and no matter what obstacle we faced, the crew always worked in tandem to find a solution. It's all thanks to their support that I've made it this far. And what a wild ride it's been. To think I had never even set foot off of Zinkin still. But now, 
I can't even count the number of islands we've saved, let alone visited. Sure, being a roving band of heroes is difficult, but it's got its perks. New faces, new places, and a whole airship's worth of fun. Who could pass this life up? Anyway, we've just begun the next chapter of our adventure. We discovered another piece of the sky map, which led us to Zega Grande. Yeah, a whole new skydom. Just imagine the danger, the promise. But I knew it was going to be fine. Just another set of memories to add to our ever-growing collection. I hope you're ready, Zeka Grande, because here we come. Skyfarers, we need your aid. Goblins! Goblins in Tempeel! We were at the dock in Folka, taking care of landing procedures, when a panicked old merchant rushed toward us. In between his wheezing, he explained that a shipment of relief supplies headed for Tempeel had been intercepted by monsters. <sighs> Tempeel reminded me of Id and how he had totally beat our butts. It was embarrassing, yeah, but... What's worse, it reminded me of losing Lyria. Tempeel, huh? Maybe this time around I can actually help out. That wasn't Vern's usual peppy tone. He was probably reliving those bad memories, just like me. I guess after you've spent as much time together as we have, you pretty much share a brain. It wasn't going to be a fun journey to Tempeel for either of us. But we were skyfarers, and desperate times called for brave faces. Anyway, goblins. Smart. Fast. That meant we wouldn't have the luxury of time. We needed to throw together the minimum amount of supplies needed for the journey and head out. I turned to Vern so we could discuss game plans, but then I saw his ears were droopy. If we're fighting goblins, then we should have them licked by lunch! Something was wrong, but with the hasty flight preparations, I couldn't spare the few minutes to investigate. Pull through it, Vern, I thought. We need you. A little less than an hour later, it was time to depart. But Vern was nowhere to be found. Hurry, Skyfarers! We can't waste another second! The later we got there, the more supplies would be stolen or destroyed. This could add up to weeks or even months of delay in Tempeel's restoration. Vern, I hope you're okay, bud. I was worried out of my mind. But a captain's gotta do what a captain's gotta do. I left a message for Vern with the merchant, and we set out. Goblins? I can't even fight stinking goblins! What good am I? Just a scaredy lizard who brings everybody down. Man. If only I was more like my pal, swinging swords and shooting spells. Then I'd finally be able to help out. Maybe I could have stopped Avia from taking Lyria. Maybe I could have done something. How do you live the skyfaring life without combat skills? Heck, I can't even blow sparks, much less fire. What kind of dragon can't breathe fire? Huh, 
I tell everybody I'm a cool dragon, but I'm just a faker. You are unworthy. You were right, Ed. I'm not worthy. Not worthy of being in the crew. Not worthy of being the captain's best bud. Oh, finally, here you are. I was looking everywhere for you. Uh-huh. What did this old dude want with me? Your captain left you a message. The crew's gone on ahead, but as an indispensable member of the Grand Cipher, they want you with them as soon as possible. And that's an order. Uh, indispensable? That meant, like, VIP, right? Me? For a second there, I was about to blow it off. Like, yeah, right, my bud's just saying that. But then I remembered. This crew had always kept it real. No lies. No flattery. Yeah, we kicked butt because we believed in one another. These guys were my best friends. And maybe we weren't perfect. I mean, we lost to Id, but my bud put his captain boots on and got right back up and tried again. It was never about swords or magic. He was about always moving forward, never giving up. And more than anything, it was about being there for each other. Who was I worrying about? Who cares if I couldn't fight? There are a million and two ways to help on an adventure. I mean, you try questing without a cook or a healer. Hello? Merchant of Urn, do you read me? If you're done daydreaming now, I've got a ship ready to go. It was time to get a move on, or I wasn't worth my scales. Sorry, everybody. Your pal Vern is on his way. We ready? The supply should be this way. Let's move. Uh-oh. Our potion stock's running low. We'll be okay against a few goblins, right? Hopefully. Just don't overdo it. <laughs> Looking good. Poor life. It's mine. Sure hope Vern's okay. He was really down, wasn't he? Poor Vern. Doing okay? Sky fair. We're doing better now. We need these supplies to repair to the fuel. Please, would you protect them? We're on it. Take cover, okay? Looking good. Just all through. Better on. You have my aid. Keep focused. Yes. Let's get going. Got it. Keep it up. I think that was the last of them. Thank you. You've saved Temtil's future. Heads up, goblin reinforcements. Just don't quit. Yeah! Did you miss me? Took me forever to catch up. Vern! Vern, was that an explosive? When did you get bombs? Here come more of those stinking gobbles. Can you take them? Sure can. Good. Hey, fly birds are coming from above! Watch your noggin! 
If those goblins manage to steal any more of the supplies, then the relief effort's good as done. No kidding. They've already hauled half our grain to higher ground. Higher ground? It sounds like a job for a cool dragon. That's a great idea, Vern. Put your wings to use. Are you sure you can manage? What if the goblins fought you? He's a king. I'll be back in 30 seconds or your money back. their retreat. I think the worst has passed. Thanks to you, Skyfarers. Tempil's finally gonna be rebuilt. We owe you everything. Vern was the real MVP. Aw, oh, shucks. I bet you say that to all your lifelong pals. <laughs> that worked out, somehow or other. After we'd secured the supplies, Vern talked about how he didn't think he was good enough for the crew. Obviously, he was the only one that felt that way. I'd always appreciated his support. During fights, he was a supply runner, lookout, and cheerleader. And both on and off the battlefield, he was my courage. But even the best people, and dragons, get discouraged sometimes. I really should have been more vocal about my appreciation. I made sure he knows now. We won the day because he came flying to the rescue. Just like I knew he would. <laughs> I'll always be there for you, pal. He was back to his old self, basking in the praise of the crew. Which caused his ego to swell like a balloon, but hey, who doesn't need a little confidence boost after a dip? And Vern... Let me just say it now. I value you. And all the hard work you do. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. <laughs> 